everyone, it's Stacey. Thank you for joining me on my channel. I'm really excited because this week is the beginning of my Christmas projects. And over the coming weeks, I'll be making various Christmas projects. So please make sure you've subscribed and make sure you hit the little bell, which will give you the reminders every time I have a new video. So today we're going to be making a quilted wall hanging. Now, I hope you like it as much as I do. I think it's absolutely adorable. And the thing that I love about it the most is that you could really do this for any theme. You could be doing a fall theme and have fall colors. You could be doing it for Halloween, or you could even do it just to match a quilt on your bed or your favorite fabric. So this week is part A, and part A will be making the quilt top for the quilted wall hanger. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our appliques onto our squares. Now I have done a really detailed video on applique and you can check that out on the link above. And I'm just going to run over it one more time but a lot quicker. I've got a template here and usually if you were just needing one heart I would say trace it onto your double sided adhesive. But when we're doing nine I've actually made a template out of card and instead of tracing through it and getting my heart, I'm actually going to take my template and trace around it like this, which is much quicker when you're doing the same design many times. And I'm going to trace around it nine times. So once I've traced my nine hearts, I'm just going to cut them out roughly. We don't want to cut them up perfectly at this stage because we do that once our fabric has been ironed onto it but I will cut some of this excess off. So just like that is how we want to cut them. So now I've got my fabrics here that I'm going to use for my hearts and what I've done is I have tried to cut them out roughly knowing where approximately my heart will sit on it. Now I'm using nine different fabrics. You might want to use all the same or you might want to just use three and have three of each. That's entirely up to you. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to turn it over so the wrong side of the fabric is facing me. I will give it a press. And then I'm going to take my heart and just place it down so that the sticky iron on side is facing the fabric. And I'm just going to try and make sure it's sitting where I want it to be. It's a little bit tricky to see, but for example, if my house is here and I really want to get that house in as the main one, well, I wouldn't want to be sticking it down here. I want the middle of the heart in the middle of this main house here. And I can see that that's actually going to come down onto my ironing board and I don't want that. So I will just trim that off so I'm not ironing that onto my ironing board. So, with my best guess, and when I'm happy, I'll iron that down. And then I'll do that for all nine of my fabrics. And of course, if they're directional, make sure they're facing the correct way. I'm just going to have a look at this flower and decide how I think it will look best on my heart. Like that. Wrong side facing me. and then so on until I've done all nine. So once we've ironed on our double-sided adhesive on all of our nine hearts, I'm just going to cut them out the best that I can. And I'm using regular scissors now. I'm not using my fabric scissors. So 
So before we iron them on, let's just pull that backing off. And let's just quickly do that for all of the hearts so we're ready to go. So now let's iron on our hearts onto our five and a half inch squares. Now I don't know if you can hear the rain outside, but it's really loud. We've had tornado warnings all afternoon. So sorry if you can't hear me so well because of the rain. So now what I'm going to do, I've got my first five and a half inch square here and I'm going to fold it in half, lining up these edges and I'm going to give it a finger press. Then I'll open it up and I'll take my first heart and I'm going to line up the inner heart piece and the bottom of the heart with where I just folded. And now I know that it's sitting in the middle of my square going this way, but we just need to check where it's sitting on this side and this side. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler and I'm going to measure one inch and an eighth. So I'm lining up my ruler on the edge of my fabric to one inch and an eighth. And I'm just gonna make sure my heart's lined up nicely, sitting on the ruler there. It's sitting on my fold, the indent of the heart and the bottom of the heart. And then I'll move that away and I'll carefully press it. Once it's secure, I'll just give the rest of it an iron. Now I didn't need to measure the bottom because I already know that that's one inch and one eighth. And now I'm going to do that for all of my hearts. So now I've ironed on all my hearts, now I'm going to applique them in place and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch right next to the edge around the whole heart and I'll do that for every single one. Now I go into a lot of detail in the, about this in my other video so please feel free to check that one out. This one's going to be just me showing you what I'm doing. So I'm putting my foot down, I've already worked out what I want my seam allowance to be and I'm just going to start stitching. Come down to my point, lift my foot up with my needle down and turn. And then I'm going to slowly turn as I come around the, the rounder part of the heart. And if I need to, I'm just pausing with my needle down and lifting my foot up just a little bit to help me get round those curves. Now I'm just going to come right past and just do two back stitches and then I'll stop there. I'm going to trim those threads quite nice and closely. And now I'm going to do that for all nine hearts. nine hearts done now lay them out and work out the best way for your hearts to be laid out you might want to shuffle them around a bit until you're happy I find it helps to take a photo and then look at the photo on your camera because sometimes things jump out at you a bit more than they do if you're just looking at them with your eyes so once you've done that what we're going to do is we're going to fold these two over on top of each other this one on top of it and this one on top of it and then we're going to sew down here in one continuous stitch we'll leave a little bit of a gap but we won't cut and then we'll come along and we'll take the last three and then sew them on so now taking the top set that we've placed together I'm just going to make sure those edges are all lined up nicely on this side this side and this side and if you'd like to you can place a couple of pins in And then I'm just going to sew along this edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've checked my stitches and I'm going to stitch at stitch length two. I'm 
I'm going to sew all the way past and I'm just going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to take my second set and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to line up all those edges, just pop in a couple of pins. And then I'm going to carry on sewing. I'm going to stitch right past the edge again. Then I'll take my last set. Again, lining up those edges. Pinning. just cut my threads and I'm going to come up to the top one open it up I've got three left I'm going to take the top one and I'm going to fold it over on top so the right sides are together line up those edges pin if I want to And so again. Then I'm going to come right past the edge, stitch a little bit, leave it there, find my second lot of hearts, open them up, take my second heart, place them right sides together, line up those edges again, pin and sew. Take my last set of hearts, open them up, take the last heart, match them up with right sides together, line up those edges, pin and sew. Come right off the edge, cut the threads and now we're just going to press our seams. So now we need to sew our seams here together, but the first thing we need to do is make sure that our seams are sitting correctly. So we want this top row going to the left, the middle row going to the right, and this bottom row going to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the bottom row. I'm going to make sure that they are all sitting to the left, and they are. Then I'm going to give them a finger press and press them into place. Then, if these ones are going left, we need these ones going right. So I'm just going to check that they're sitting towards the right. I'll give them a finger press and then press. Remembering we want to be gentle so we're not pulling our squares out of shape and then we'll do the last set and we want them to be sitting to the left again so I'm just going to make sure they're sitting correctly underneath then I'm going to finger press press the seams finger press press the seams now we're going to sew them together by nesting the seams. So let's go back to our sewing machine. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top and fold down that top row onto the second row. And then I'm going to find the seams and I'm going to nest them. So that involves me finding where the seams meet. One seam's folded over this way, one seam's folded over this way. And we push them together until they can't go any further and that's called nesting our seams and i do have a video on this if you'd like to watch it for more detailed instructions and then what i'm going to do is just pin on either side so it can't go anywhere then i'll come to my next seam and do exactly the same thing find where they're folded over push them up against each other nesting them and then pin on either side, remembering to line up all the edges while you're doing this. Then 
then I will line up the edges and pin the corners. And if you'd like to, you could put another one in the middle. I'm not going to worry about that this time. Then I'm just going to sew again at my, with my quarter inch seam allowance. Remembering you can pause and just check that you're happy that everything's lined up. And then I'm just going to come right past the edge, cut the threads, and then I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to fold that down onto the last row, nest those seams, pin and sew. So once we've sewn all our blocks together, let's just give those seams a press. And now I'm just going to press them whichever way they want to go. And these ones are coming down and these ones are going up. So that's how I'll press them. So I'll just turn it over to the front again. I'll give it a gentle finger press and press along each of those seams. And these ones want to come down. And it doesn't hurt to just give it a quick iron while we're here. I'm also going to trim off all my loose threads at this point. Now let's attach our borders. I'm going to start on the sides and I've cut two strips at two and a half inches by 15 and a half inches. So I'll just do this side. I'm going to line up those edges and pin. I'm going to flip it over so that, sorry, so that when I am sewing them, I can make sure that these seams are sitting nicely. And I'll put a pin down the bottom, making sure the edges on both sides are nicely lined up. And I'm just going to pop one in the middle. Then I'm just going to sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I am stitching at a stitch length of two. When I come up to these seams I'm just going to make sure they're sitting the right way so this one's sitting away from me so I want to make sure that's how I'll sew over it. The second one is facing towards me, so that one's automatically going to be sitting correctly. And then I'm just going to stitch right off the edge. We don't need to do a back stitch we'll, because we'll be coming back over it. Then I'm going to take the other piece and attach that. Now my fabric is directional. So I'm just going to be making sure that I'm attaching it the right way. I want my Christmas trees facing the right way, so it's up the right way like this. If I sewed it this way, they'd be upside down. So just keep an eye on that. If you are using directional fabric, just make sure you are cutting it so it will sit correctly. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. Pin and then sew. Okay, now let's just press those seams. So I haven't been setting the seams on this project, but you can if you'd like to. Just helps them sit extra nicely. Then we'll push that over and we'll be facing the seams up towards the border. Then I'll give that a finger press and then press. And I'll do that for both sides. So now let's add our top and bottom borders. Cut two pieces at two and a half inches by 19 and a half inches. And we're going to attach them to the top and the bottom. What you might need to do is just give these edges a trim so they're nicely lined up. 
One thing I did forget to say was when we are attaching the side borders, you might also need to give those edges a trim so it's nice and square. But to attach our top and bottom borders, we're just doing exactly the same thing. I'm making sure that my pattern is sitting how I want it. I'm going to fold it on top, line up all the edges, pin and then sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now let's just press those seams. So now we're just going to do exactly the same thing that we did on the sides. I'm just going to set the seams and then I'm going to fold it over to, with the seams towards the border, finger press and press. And I'll do that on both sides of my border, top and bottom rather. And then I will just cut any more loose threads. And now I've finished my little quilt top for my quilted wall hanging. What do you think? I think that's looking super cute. Okay everyone, so now we've finished our quilt top for our quilted wall hanging. You can find the full supplies list and the cutting instructions on my website, stacy-lee.com. You'll find the link in the description below. Next week we'll be moving on and we'll be quilting our quilt top and making these little loops to hang it with our wooden dowel. Thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to see you next week where we'll be finishing our quilted wall hanging. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.